This video is to show you how to make your own do-it-yourself cloth face mask using a 3D pen and no sewing at all. Undoubtedly, commercial face masks are going to become even harder to get in the coming weeks and months, and that doesn't even touch upon the price gouging that will probably also happen. The Center for Disease Control in the U.S. has a dedicated webpage, which I've linked to in the video description, that lists mask recommendations and even has some other free tutorials for very crude face masks. This is the CDC no-sew mask you just saw. Not really easy to use, and it probably won't last long, but it is better than nothing and easy to make. So if you don't like this tutorial, check out their webpage for other options on making your own mask. I wanted to provide people with another method to make their own higher quality mask without sewing. The masks I show here are sturdier, much more reusable, and easier to adjust than the crude masks. I try to show a number of different ways that these masks can be constructed, many times using common household items. But yes, you will need both a 3D pen and some flexible fill to make this work. I doubt there will be panic buying of 3D pens and flexible filament, so those two items should be available through the coming months. Before we get into the details, I just want to say that I hope you, your friends, and your family are safe and healthy. I want to say that some of the tools used in this tutorial can be dangerous, so be very careful and use caution when trying anything shown in this video. Also, these masks are intended for personal use only and should be used at your own risk. I made a free template that I'll put a link to in the video description. You just print it out, then cut out the mask outline to get the size of the fabric right, and then use the two strap tensioners to pen over. In terms of what cloth material to use, I'm seeing cotton being recommended the most. Here I'm just showing some old clothes that I'm going to reuse. Another important aspect is to use something with a tight weave like what you see here. And remember, you need to use flexible filament for this to work well. Once you get the paper template cut out, you can tape it to the fabric of your choice and get cutting. Quick tip, once you get the fabric cut out, add more tape to hold the template in place because you'll need it for the next step which is to trim off the hatched areas shown on the paper template in all four corners. The newly cut sides of the fabric fray and get damaged really easily, so we're gonna fold over all four sides and lock them down with filament. We start by taping down the two shorter sides and then adding filament over them. Note that you want a healthy amount of filament on each side of the edge to make it really secure. This is what the finished short side looks like. It's very similar for the top side. Fold it over and tape it down, and then lock it down with a bunch of filament. Another tip is to push down on the flexible filament with your finger to get it to stick best to the fabric. Just be careful because it can be hot. Here's a look at all four sides folded over and held down with the flexible filament, which you can see at work here. Now we need to add four holes to the mask, and I'm going to talk about some different options for doing that. One option is to use a hole bunch. Or if you don't have one of those, you can use something to get a really small hole started and then use a pencil to enlarge it like you see me doing here. In terms of straps, you have a lot of options. You could use twine or rope. You could use a giant rubber band that you cut to make a strap. You could use strips of fabric, kind of like the CDC version, but I recommend reinforcing with flexible filament. There's this comfortable elastic banding, which is what I end up using. Heck, you could just use some common rubber bands linked together. For a lot of those strap options, you end up running something through a hole, which I recommend reinforcing with flexible filament, as is shown here. This is just a demo of how common rubber bands could be used as a strap with that reinforced hole. To make my mask as comfortable as possible, I ended up going with the black elastic band. I used 16 inches for the bottom band and 18 inches for the top band. Remember how I was talking about using a hole punch? Well, it's great for making a hole in both ends of the strap. To secure the strap to the mask, I would create a plug of flexible filament through both the hole in the strap and in the mask. Once I had that part of the plug made, I would put another layer of filament over the top of it. Then I would flip the mask over, use some tweezers to make sure that the hole and plug are exposed. And then I repeat the process on this side. 
meaning I complete the plug and then go over it with another layer. Both straps are now attached. And you can see that the straps are really on there. To make the straps easily adjustable, we need to pen out what I'm calling the strap tensioners. These are also found on the paper template you print out, and you just need to add some wax paper over the top of them. Once you get the first layer done, add a second layer to make it stiffer. This stiffness gives more friction, which is how the tensioner works. We install the tensioner by poking a loop of the strap through the slot. Being able to pull on this loop from either side lets you either tighten or loosen the mask. Hey look, there I am, with the finished mask. Let's put this sucker on. So having the straps be a little bit longer makes it much easier to get the mask over your head. Once you get it situated on your face, you can start pulling on those loops to tighten the mask up. Sweet, now I'm ready for my part in Mad Max. I hope you're able to use this DIY guide to successfully make your own face masks. If you have any tips or tricks you'd like to share with others that you found while making your mask, please leave them in the comments below. I also want to add that if you have a 3D printer, you can also be printing face shields to donate to your local hospital. I've been working with other makers in my area to do this. Check out massfordocs.com to get involved. And as I said at the start, please stay healthy and safe, and I wish you all the best. If you're interested in learning more about how to use a 3D pen, check out this tutorials playlist which covers all skill levels.